In this video, we're going to talk about Dicecris algorithm and more importantly about the implementation of Dicecris algorithm in Java. So before we get started with Dicecris algorithm, I'm just going to show you my entire graph class except for Dicecris algorithm uh, just to get a good idea about what all it, are the com components of this graph class. So we have two inner classes called uh, vertex and road. Now, as you know, in a graph, there are always vertices and edges, uh, and road is basically just edge. Uh, the vertex has a string ID and a linked list of roads and a pointer to the parent vertex of that vertex. Uh, the road class just has a pointer to the index of the destination vertex and the cost of the road. Uh, and it's also implementing the comparator and comparable interfaces. Now we're implementing these two interfaces from the Java API because we will need to add roads to a priority queue in Dicecris algorithm. And in order to do that, you need to implement both of these interfaces right here. Uh, other than that, it's basically just very simple. This is the main method. We're just adding a few vertices uh, and a few roads uh, then there are just a few methods for the add vertex, add road, remove vertex, remove road. And we I will be implementing Dicecris algorithm right here for you guys. Now, before we start off with Dicecris algorithm, uh, I wanted to show you what graph are we actually going to be using for this particular thing. Oops. So this is how the map will be looking. So this is just a graphical representation. Before that, I showed you the adjacency list representation. This is the graphical representation of the map. These are the vertices, which are the cities of Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Columbus, et cetera. And the roads are basically just the edges of the graph. And that's basically what I did in my code over here is that I just added in the main method, all these cities and their corresponding edge width, the roads with their corresponding edge weights. And uh, yeah, so I will right now implement the Express algorithm with you guys and explain it on as I am writing it over here with you guys. So with that, I have a print solution method, which is basically just going to take uh, an integer array and just you know, format print the Dicecris, you know, results after we use the algorithm so that we can easily test our code. So let's just get started with uh, implementing Dicecris algorithm. So first we're going to create an integer array called path cost. Now this will hold all of the, you know, the path cost for each and every uh, node or vertex, as you could, uh, as you could say, of the graph that we have. Uh, the size will be num vertices because uh, every ver because num vertices, as I said, is a point is a count for the number of vertices that we have in this graph. Then, as you know, there's also we have a set of finalized vertices in every whenever we implement Dicecris algorithm. Instead, I'll be using a Boolean array called finalized set. Now, this is a bit important. Now, let's first actually understand what both of these arrays are. So, path cost, the path cost array basically will hold the cost at the path cost estimates for each and every vertex. So, the path cost at vertex i would at, at index i would have the estimated path cost for the vertex at, for, at, at index i that we have in the graph. And it's the same thing about the finalized set. So the finalized set is basically a Boolean array. So if a vertex has been finalized and that vertex lies at index i, so inside the finalized set at index i, it will be true, otherwise it will be false. And then we're going to have an in called num finalized. It's just a counter for the amount of vertices that we have finalized in this algorithm. So let's just start with it. So since everything inside our vertices array over here uh, 
all of them are all the indices are integers as you know since this is an array and we're given a string source for diet squares algorithm so for that there i have a helper method called index of which basically just returns the index for the source so I'm just going to do an src equals to index of source so that will give us the source uh index now we're gonna keep a check here. If SRC equals equals minus one, then we're just gonna return. Now, the index of method, which we have, returns a negative, returns minus one, if the source that we provide the string just doesn't exist inside the graph that we have. So in that case, if the source doesn't exist, we're just gonna return. And yeah. Now we're gonna go up to the initialization. Now, as you know, during the initialization of Dice Swiss algorithm, we set all of the uh, path, as, path cost estimates to infinity. So we're just gonna do that over here. And we have to make sure that uh, all of the, that the number that the finalized set is all false. So we're gonna do finalized set at index i equals to false because at the beginning of Dice Swiss algorithm nothing has been finalized and the path cost at index i now we can't say infinity because this is java so we're just going to do oops, integer dot max value which is basically like the infinity equivalent over here uh, now we're going to create a priority queue as i said uh, of type road we're just going to call it foo because I don't have any better names left. Equals new priority of type road. Yeah, so basically, the reason why we're actually, there are different implementations of Dice Swiss algorithm. And in some of them, they don't use a priority queue. But that is very inefficient because the time complexity will be uh, of the order of n squared rather than n log n. So uh, if you use a priority, because it's going to be n log n instead of n squared, which is uh, which will save you a lot of time, and that will make sure that your algorithm is very, very efficient. Now, just to start off, we're going to add a new road, which is now a lot of people might get confused here. When I when we add a new road in Dice Swiss algorithm inside the priority queue, we're not actually adding a road. We're adding a path because a path can also be you know seen as a road. So it's going to have the two index and then the path cost. Now since the road since the path from the source to the source is of length zero, we're just going to add it like this, and we're going to make the path cost for the source equal to zero because it's infinite it's at, as infinity over here and then we're going to go to vertices at source dot parent equals to null now this is very a very important step now uh for my implementation we're not printing the path as well we're just going to do the least distance but if you want to do the path then this is a very important step to do vertices to get the parent and set it as null because the source will be the beginning of the spanning tree so it's since it's going to be the root it has its parent has to be set as null okay now now that we've done all the initialization uh and you know everything has been done here oh just one last step we forgot to increment the num final line oh actually never mind so now we're going to go into the main loop of Dice Swiss algorithm. Now, the condition for this is that the num, now there are actually two conditions, but we can only have one here. Now, num finalize is less than num vertices. Now, what does this mean? Now, this basically means that, you know, while we have all the number of finalized vertices is less than the total number of vertices, we'll just continue doing this. We also have another additional check that if, uh, it, as soon as our priority queue is empty, we're just gonna break the loop. Uh, and yeah, that's gonna be it. 
so now that we've done this, let's get started with the real part of the algorithm, which is uh, which which is basically gonna, we're we're going to start that right now. So we've entered the loop. So now we're going to pull out our well, now, since this is uh, a priority queue in the Java API, it's basically a min on top heap. You can imagine it like that. So we're just going to pull the path with the lowest cost estimate out of the uh, priority queue. And we're just going to save its index as the two index of this road. As I said, this is going to show the destination. So index over here is storing the destination of the road. I'm just going to write that here. And all of this will be available on my GitHub. And I'm also going to keep you know, writing a few comments here so that if you ever get lost, you can just uh, look it up over here. Uh, yep. So. We're just storing the destination index of the road. And now we are just going to do oops, vertex v equals to vertices at index. So we are obtaining the vertex v, which is the vertex at the index of the destination. And we're going to do a small little check here finalized index. So if the, ver if the vertex of this destination road has, oops, we got finalized set. So if it has been finalized, we're just gonna write a statement called continue so that we go on with the loop. Uh, and if it hasn't been uh, finalized, we're just gonna finalize it right now because it's true and the num finalize will be increase yeah now now what we've done is that we've basically process now this entire process over here is called processing the current vertex now the these few lines of code here we're just processing the vertex uh that we just pulled out of the priority queue and next we're going to process its neighbors uh, I think we should just say one hop neighbors, but that's kind of implied what I mean over here. So first, since we know that all the, now since this is an adjacency list uh, graph, we all we have to do is that we have to just get an iterator and just iterate through the linked list that we have in the vertex class. So as I showed that we have a linked list of the roads. So it's gonna be very, very easy to process all of its neighbors. So I'm just going to get an iterator of type road. I'm just going to call it ITR because I'm really good at naming stuff. V.roads.iterator. And now we're just going to do a simple while loop while ITR.has next. Oh, shit. I, I, I keep doing that again. It goes to hash code yet. Yeah, now we've got it. Now we're going to create another temp road object equals, which will be itr.next. Now this is basically just obtaining the next road, storing it in a temp variable. Uh, then we're just going to do the two index. Now you might get confused between j and uh, index. So I'm just going to say that j stores the neighbors index in the graph. So yeah, so we're just basically storing the index, its index in the graph. Now, if J has not been finalized, then we will do a bunch of stuff. If it has been finalized, then this will just go on to the next element, uh, basically. Yeah, so we're gonna create a cost estimate. Now the cost estimate for this index here, what will it be? Now the cost estimate for a neighbor will be equal to the path cost 
of its parent. Now its parent, as we know, is index over here. This is the parent. So it's gonna be the path cost of the parent plus the cost of the row. So temp dot, uh, what is, oh, no, 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 is it cost? Yeah, temp dot cost. So yeah, now we, we're done with that. We're gonna check, now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna check if this cost estimate is less than path cost at J. Oh wait, what if I say? Oh, it's path, it's path cost, not path cost. That's what was giving us the error. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is that if the new cost estimate is less than the original path cost, we are just gonna, you know, change, we're just gonna update the path cost at index J will be equal to cost estimate. And we're gonna do vertices at J and set its parent to V. Now this is again for the spanning tree. Uh, this is a very important step if you want to get the spanning tree of the shortest path. So it is imperative that you set its parent to V over here. And after this, we're going to add it back to the queue. Now, since uh, this is where a personally made heap would be better, because if you have your own heap, then the time complex, because you don't have to remove everything again and again, all you have to do is update it at the, you know, update the path. So that will actually take much less time than doing the whole, you know, adding it back again and then removing it. Because in that case, what we're doing is that we're having an extra log n time, every, you know, every time, you know, it's gonna be the worst case scenario. So, I mean, that's not your biggest worry. It's still gonna be fast. It's just not, it's just gonna be like during one time, you might see that it is slightly slow, not the best thing, but you know, it, it's still gonna work. Now we're gonna use our helper method called print solution. And we are going to, since it takes an input of an integer array, which is going to be our path cost over here, we're just going to put that in. Yeah, so that is it. That is Dijkstra's algorithm. Now let's just uh, see if it works. So, yeah. Yeah, so basically, First, we're just printing out the graph as its adjacency list representation over here. And then we have all the vertices and then the distance from the source, which is Buffalo. So the distance, the shortest path between Buffalo and Buffalo is zero, between Cleveland and Buffalo is 191, Pittsburgh 216, Columbus 334,